Yeah, that's really kind of how all of this shit started. So I got back, like after I got back from Mexico, me and the wife are good. We're kind of figuring life out. So I go to welding school. I use my GI Bill to go to welding school and I'm kind of, you know, just making fun little art and shit. And one of my instructors happened to be there. He was like, hey, write your name on the back. I made a surfboard for my son. And there happened to be a Dremel there and I wrote my name on it. And I was like, oh shit, that's fucking cool, man. Like something, something clicked in me with that. And so it was right around Christmas time, hella broke and just started making friends and family engraved little bar signs, house signs or some shit like that. And then kind of keep growing from there. Like really crazy how it just clicked like that. All right, I've been wanting to do this one for a minute. We have uh, Hank Robinson on here out of, um, were, you, were you born in? No, no, nah, born in Germany, but pretty much Phoenix is home, man. Born in Germany? Yeah, yeah. Dang. So dad was in the army, got it in, you know. <laughs> right. Really? There I, pop, there I popped out. As as always, Danny Cass here. How you doing, Danny? I'm Let's doing go. really good. We nice have, to meet you. Good to have you on. We have Brittany Palmer in Hi. here. Hey, hey. How you doing, Brittany? Good. Um, so uh, I, I think I'm trying to think the first time I m remember meeting you, and I think it was at the Daytona 500. I believe so, yeah. Is that it? Um, and then you did the engravement for the – for Kurt, but it was for the um, – uh, was it the Wounded Warrior Foundation? I believe that was through Vet Ticks with uh, oh, okay. yeah with Kurt Busch because he donates so many veteran or tickets to NASCAR for veterans, and then I ended up working with uh, Vet Ticks like years before that, and it kind of linked up together where we ended up engraving that hood for him. Yep, that was so badass. That was sick, huh? Yeah. And then also we we were there. I was there when you gave the MGK his one. Yep, that was in Phoenix too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, that was badass. We got to pre present the engraving to MGK right after the album release. You know, I think he was on his way home back here too after that show. But yep. that was insane. He still has that, I think, in the studio. Let's go. Um, of course, and and you've done many, many, many more uh, trophies for lots of people. So background, Hank. Uh, was United States Army uh, veteran, uh, Iraq, Af Afghanistan, graduated of the combination welding school in Arizona, um, certified scuba, and then rebreed the technical driving instructor, father of three, and married for 16 years. Woo! That, that's, wow. that's impressive. Is a solid man right there, 16 years of marriage. You don't hear that too much anymore, so mm -hmm. that is... We actually got we actually got divorced and then married again oh, a wow. year later, yeah. Bro, I love those stories. <laughs> My girlfriend's parents are like that, divorced yeah. and then remarried. Well, I literally, like, we got married. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, dope. three years. He, like, went on a sailboat <laughs> with her cousin for three years in the Bahamas, and then they reconnected, Let's got married. Go. With That's her weird. cousin, as in, like... <laughs> Wait a minute. It was a guy cousin. Oh, so it was, it was a second, like, yeah. it was a second cousin. Second cousin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I didn't dig that deep. But. I mean... Crazy. Born in Germany. Yeah. So were you born on like a military? Yeah, it was. Base? It was just right outside. So like it wasn't actually on the base. We were just right outside. My dad and my mom lived off of uh, base housing there. So both parents military? No, no, just my dad. Just your dad? Yeah. And then how old were you when you when you moved to Phoenix? Uh, we moved around through the states, you know, for a few years. New York, Kentucky, a couple other places. I came to Phoenix probably in sixth grade. Yep. And then that's just his home from there. So. And then how, how how were you as a kid? Were you a good kid, bad kid? Horrible. Horrible? Horrible. Like, now that I look back, having kids, and my son just turned 13, so, like, Crazy. I'm like, fuck, what did I do to my mom, Is he giving man? it back to you, or what? Absolutely not. My kids are fucking awesome, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing, but me and the wifey are doing it right, apparently, because they really are just badass. Yeah, I feel like you learn from your mistakes, and I think if you... Uh, you you kind of realize that, then you will, uh, you know, really... Do, do a good job of steering your ki kids clear of yeah. what you did or what happened back then, and you kind of make sure that your kids and don't I go keep, down the same. I, yeah, I just keep it straight 100 with them all the time. I'm yep. like, yo, this is life, bro. Like, you better be ready for this shit because yep. it's coming. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then how did, um like, when did you enroll? How did that go about, like, entering into the military? So literally um, two days after 9-11, I was at the recruiting station, ready to go. Took my test about a week later, and I was gone. Two weeks after 9-11, I was in boot camp. Wow. So Dang. that was like my calling. I literally was like, you know what I mean, watching that shit on TV, 7 in the morning where we were at, and then I just, something called me. I just turned 18, and I was like, yo, it's time to go. Like, they fucking with America? Let's go. <laughs> so crazy. Like, uh, uh, that 
that time, I remember I was in Australia. I was supposed to be flying to America that next day. Fuck. And and at that time, I forget exactly what what age I was, but it was I was still obviously a young teenager. I'm um, supposed to come back to America, and then for us, it was New York in the morning, which means it was nighttime, late yeah. in Australia. It was it was like a ten or eleven o'clock at night when the first one happened, and it really was, I think, the first time is like I you know had been growing up traveling. I know you kind of grew up traveling, and 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 it was that first time of that like real threat. And it changed the world forever. 100%. You know? And then airports, planes worldwide were grounded for however many days. I remember yeah. being on one of the first planes back. And then that was also the creation of TSA. Mm -hmm. Like, before that, you could just walk up to the... Yeah, any, you get a any... high five. You go to the gate by yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I was a kid, right? So, like, I used to have to get liquids walked there by my bag, parents. Liquids in my bag. Liquids. Lip gloss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and for whatever reason, I was kind of obsessed by that as well. Well, uh, I, I travel a lot, and then watching it, watching that second plane go in, it was crazy. Crazy, yeah, definitely life changing, man. Yeah, and and I, I like cut newspaper articles out, and at whatever age, and I just remember like thinking of, wow, like you know, the world we live in has changed and it's been attacked, and I know that that uh, happens, but in the Western world side, we really hadn't had ha had been attacked by that, especially people kind of all of our age. That that was the first thing to us that was like a full on change so for you you just saw it happen and we're like fuck it, i'm out time to go yep let's go handle business and where did you go to straight from there uh station in germany so yep. it's kind of cool i got to pick my duty station so yep. went to went to germany uh literally was there for a few months and we got uh, a peacekeeping mission in kosovo and i was in kosovo for just about a year and they brought us back and then we started doing our iraq train up so yep. went to iraq afghanistan all that shit yep um obviously super gnarly right yeah like, like you go in a well, world that is completely different yeah like 04 iraq was just straight up gangster shit man walking the streets and just running and gunning 24 7 like it was nuts oh, crazy yeah and then how did it work back then like how, how does that lineup work you sign up you get put in the military you get put with the squadron you get yeah, yeah you just kind of get put in with a battalion so it's just all a bunch of infantry dudes and they yep. kind of break you up into companies and just it's just really it's just you and your platoon out there just getting it so and then how old were you? 18. 18. Well, and over over in Iraq, I was 20. Yep. So I had just turned 20 over there. Yep. And then how long how, how long did that last for you? How long were you in the military? Uh, Just over 10 years. Wow. Yeah. So I got out. Once we started having kids and shit, I was like, all right, it's time, time. to get it's, out. It's time, man. Yeah. Because I'd see a lot of dudes go over there with family, and they don't come back to what it was before, you know? And I'm like, there's zero chance that's going to happen to me. Yeah. And have you still maintain close relationships and people that you're with over there? 100%. Yeah, definitely. I've got some good buddies. Like, on a monthly basis, we kind of get together from Afghanistan. And we just had a scout sniper reunion from the guys, the, the platoon that was in Afghanistan. We all just got an Airbnb and kind of partied it up for the weekend. So that yeah, was super cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, And then, obviously, mentally, like, at such a young age, you're seeing things that you've never seen before and that's, like, life-altering. Um. How, how was your process coping with that or coming back into, say, like, regular life? Yeah, so coming back was fucking, like, gnarly for me. So, like I was saying, like, that was part of the divorce and stuff. So I came back, and I literally kind of went crazy. That's when I tatted my face all up. I moved to Mexico for a year and just kind of forget life here, you know, because I never paid bills, did, yeah. the, did the dad thing or the, the house thing or anything like that. So all of that was hella new and just kind of overwhelmed. But definitely just finding other veterans and – relaying stories and shit kind of helps bring it all full circle and you know you just find your path in life and ride I, on it I, I had a friend i uh, have a friend uh damien mando who was ended up being he was australian but ended up being a sniper in the military in afghanistan hell yeah and ended up um s similar to you like when he came out he like hit rock bottom i think in, in that time too he said he'd like bought like six houses and were paying them off and was kind of like running that but he said he was empty yeah and he ended up in um he ended up in uh brazil and hit rock bottom yeah drugs alcohol the whole thing like you know wanted to commit suicide all, all these things right hits rock bottom and then you know has this like idea of like all right like i obviously what he did in the military and the things he did he's like all right i've got to transcend this because i still have this anger and then ended up creating um, International a Anti Poaching Foundation in yeah. Zimbabwe, and then went and then protects the land and basically hunts poachers, people poaching, trying to hunt elephants. Yeah, and basically wow. transcended his whole uh, life into that and moved there, created a family, and now has this huge running organization and has people all the way from uh, uh, you know 
Leonardo DiCaprio and all these people and does these talks for um, uh, 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 what, what's the network I'm thinking of? Nat Geo. Does all these big live not so Nat Geo and has kind of refound himself. And like where I'm going at with you is like your welding. I think that what like what 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 was the age of the time when you first started welding, or when was like the moment for you to like transcend that and create something from? Yeah, that's really kind of how all of this shit started. So I got back, like after I got back from Mexico, me and the wife are good. We're kind of figuring life out. So I go to welding school. I use my GI Bill to go to welding school. And I'm kind of, you know, just making fun little art and shit. And one of my instructors happened to be there. He was like, hey, write your name on the back. I made a surfboard for my son. And there happened to be a Dremel there. And I wrote my name on it. And I was like, oh, shit, that's fucking cool, man. Like something something clicked in me with that. And so it was right around Christmas time. Hella broke. And just started making friends and family engraved little bar signs, house signs or some shit like that. And then kind of keep growing from there. Like really crazy how it just clicked like that. And the engravings are super gnarly. Like it's almost like you're you're tattooing like sheet metal. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like I, I really thought that was the path I was going to take is kind of like go the tattoo way. And then I found metal and it kind of just completely changed the game for me. So Were you trying to like be a tattoo artist or... Not really. I was just trying to get through welding school and go, but like all of my really close friends are all tattoo artists. And it was kind of this, I really kind of picked their brains off what they do onto the, into the metal world as well. So it's pretty much a tattoo on metal, you know? Yeah. And that's not an easy medium. I've played with Dremels. Hell no. And I've, I've done that. <laughs> and it just, to, for you to have that steady hand on metal, because I mean, it'll just go. Yeah. Like it'll just, and then you're like, oh, nope. Most definitely. Mess that one up because you can't buff it out and do it again. It's like yeah, I've, it's I've, set yet, and... I've yet to find the eraser button. Yeah, there's so. not an eraser on metal, unfortunately. <laughs> I know. I've, I've tried to sign my name before, and it just looks like god-awful. God-awful. Yeah, like the first time I did a full-body truck, like I didn't, like, told the wife, I was like, look, I just bought this brand-new truck. Not even going to drive it. I'm going to engrave the whole fucking thing. Man. And you did? So, yeah. That was the first, the first year that I really rocked out SEMA. That was kind of when I broke out in the car and truck scene was 2015 SEMA and... I was just sitting there. I didn't even have a chair. I was on a bucket just engraving the side of a F-150 live at SEMA. And so it kind of changed the game. So you just kind of showed up to SEMA. SEMA, for people who don't know, is like a trade show for all car stuff. Specialty Equipment yep. Manufacturing Association. It's the biggest car show on planet Earth. Yep. Like, it's massive. Yep. Monster's always had big activations there. I believe we used to do our sales meeting. The sales meeting used to happen around that time at SEMA. So you just show up in Vegas, show up in SEMA. You bought this Ford one F one fifty beat up truck, yep. and then you've just like started basically engraving it. Going to town, so Did I you... knew I knew I wanted to do a military theme around it and yep. kind of pay homage to my era war fighters, you know. And so we did. Uh, it was called Freedom Blues, badass blue paint job on there, and it was just a collage of military members, kind of in Af in Iraq and Afghanistan, kind of overseas, and kind of played out through the whole thing. American flag headliner, like literally badass and then did you have a deal with somebody or you just kind of had the idea of like i'm gonna show up and just kind of see what happens well i had uh i was in american force uh wheels i was in their booth so you pretty much have to be in somebody's booth yeah. at the show or whatever yeah. so i had already they had already i gave them the game plan of kind of what i was doing and they brought me out so that's when it hit man it was just crazy it's been nonstop. i've been engraving live every year since then really at SEMA, yeah and then, and then, where was where, where was kind of the next click in motion? I was trying to, I'm, I'm trying to look here, but I, I don't. I think was um, uh, was NASCAR the first big engraving you did for Monster? The Kurt's? yeah, the Kurt Hood for sure was the biggest at the time. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the the secondary was like going from uh, going from SEMA, making those connections. Like, what was your next kind of big moment into that? What do you mean, like after SEMA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like really just finding other people, especially with the Monster Team, man. There's so many different organizations, like so many different teams that do certain things. Yeah, exactly. And it was like we got on with the Loretta's. Like I've been doing the Loretta Lynn trophies, yep. all the first place trophies for a few years. And we just did the uh, the 40th annual trophy, which was like a massive six-foot rotating trophy that combined it all 40 years of Loretta's into one trophy. So I've got like... A collage of everybody since the beginning on there so that one was massive and then how long do these things take forever so typically on a truck like <laughs> i know it's like very time consuming for real a typical truck anywhere from 1500 hours to 2500 hours so wow. and that's just wow. i probably do those in about six months 
and then literally uh, everything mm. else, all the shows. How yeah. many hours a day do you put in? Are you like six, at least eight? at least at least ten? Ten. Yeah, at least. Just psh, yeah. steady on that. At wow. least it really depends on what's going on, and I try not to say no. But we have a bunch of military stuff coming up. We just did um, with Gronk and Cowboy. We just went to the Pentagon uh, last month, or month and a half ago, and I engraved some trophies for. Um, each service branch had an enlisted aid of the year. So yep. we were there at the Pentagon with the chief of, Joint Chief of Staffs and all that. And we got to present the trophies there. And it was just badass, man. How's that experience? Too cool. Walking into the Pentagon was badass. I was messing with everybody because they gave me a little key card. So I was acting real important, just walking up to doors and trying to check. Just them. swiping <laughs> around. And you're like, oh, not getting in there. And then you open a door and you're like, oh, it's just a janitor closet. I was like, I'm Next out of the, I'm out of the military now, so they can't mess with me, man. So yeah. that's a good thing. <laughs> Did you get in trouble in the military when you're never, in there? Never, never. No. I got <laughs> I almost got in trouble in Afghanistan because I punched this dude, but it was just like, I don't know. By the by the end of it, that was my last tour. It was 08 or no 09. And the like the rules there started to get real just kind of crazy about doing anything to anybody. And, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when the world started to change. Yeah, I know. I was like, what are you talking about, man? Like <laughs> But going back to the Pentagon, so it's Gronk, Cowboy, yep. you, you yeah. guys. How's that security clearance? I'm not sure. Darlene pulled all that off, man. So <laughs> I was like, just keep your fingers crossed and we're going to be all right. So, but it was awesome, man. Like, Gronk is too cool. I mean, we were at the, the beach party a couple yeah. weeks ago and Cowboy is just badass as well, man. Yeah, so all American. Yeah, no, it was just cool. Just kicking it with them all weekend. And we got to, uh, we got to tour the Marines, gave us the tour the whole next day. So we went and saw the 8th and I Marines and just all these badass guys. And they put on a bunch of just cool little shows with their uh, drill and ceremony team. And we got to go watch all those guys practice. And it was just badass, man. It was, a, it was a really cool. It's so much history there. Like, it's insane. So gnarly, right? Yeah. Like, crazy. The Pentagon. Like, what really goes on in there? Right. <laughs> you know? It, flying over, it's cool. I don't think I've ever flown over it. No? I don't no. think you can fly over yeah. it. I mean, you fly next you to fly it. You fly next to it, yeah. <laughs> I think you can see it. I mean, you're not I flying mean, you over, over it. it. Like, I think specifically that's a thing. You can't do that, right? Um, I mean, Maybe no, not. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, you're not You're not supposed to. But you fly next to it. Yeah. It's one of those cool buildings, you know? You're like, well, what's really going on in there? There's right? a lot going on in there. There's so lot, much. A lot of intelligence in there. Is there more intelligence in there or the White House? In there. In yeah. there? For sure. What's well, cooler for you to go to the White House or the Pentagon? Pentagon for me. Yeah, right? Yeah. I was like, we'll see. I'm going to go to the White House a few years. I'm putting that shit out in the aura. I'll be there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I mean, the White House is so, uh, it's, did you go? I, I mean, I, I got to go to the White House. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just because I like like old art and history. So 100%. it was cool to walk down the halls and see these old paintings, you know, yeah. that were had been in there for a few hundred years. and. I got to go to the Olympics uh, twice, yeah. so I took yeah. the opportunity to go, and uh, it was when George Bush was in the White House, and a lot of people that work for the the team or U.S. team were kind of like 50-50, you know, yeah. on uh, whatever presidency people get political. That's any president right? ever. But I ever. Brought, ever. I had a, a bobblehead collection going on <laughs> that I'd had from different people, and I had this George Bush bobblehead. Oh, yeah. So I went to the White House, and I you go through like, you know, like an airport security to get in kind of style. Yeah. And all I brought was a Sharpie and a George Bush bobblehead. And, <laughs> dude, the people that were working security were just dying. Oh, sure. They're like, I can't wait to see this kid. Like, what's he doing? <laughs> and we didn't even know if we were actually going to meet him. And uh, they line us all up in one of the big estate rooms, and everyone's in there. There's like 200 Olympians there. And all of a sudden they just like, all right, now everyone line up and go out the back into the back lawn zone. And we yeah. line these stairs, and sure enough, there's like, hundred press and then there's the president like sitting at the you know key speaker booth right there in the center and then all of a sudden he kind of opens it up for some autographs and everyone just started pushing me because everyone on the team knew i had it i'm just walking around oh, go. so literally within like he signs one autograph and i'm like getting pushed i'm like oh god like here we go and then there's me the bobbles extra bobbly it's at this super point. bobbly <laughs> he just started laughing i didn't know how he was gonna take it he just laughed and like signed it and, like handed off and then everyone was like oh my god you could sell this for a million dollars or something and i'm just like well It'll just go next to my Count Chocula bobblehead, really, at this point. Exactly. <laughs> Y'all Count Chocula gets moved to the front. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It actually ended up in a box that my girlfriend, when she was cleaning my house, was like, these are things you should probably throw out. And I'm like, but this is a George Bush signed bobblehead. She's like, well, you should probably still throw it out. Yeah, right. You know, it's crazy. That, that's Danny's 
Two-time Olympic silver medalist. Most so definitely. Did two runs there, 2002, 2006. That was all 2002. Did you ever go? Did you guys go back to the White House in 06? Or the bobblehead signing was 2006? Well, I actually, I think I blew off the White House appearance in 2002, and then this was in 2006. Oh, okay. Oh, you didn't go the first time. I didn't go the first time. We had something important going on in our own lives, and I was like, no, I'd rather hang out with Dingo and <laughs> go to Mexico Shit, than yeah. go to the White House right now. We were we were heavily, at that stage, we were uh, building what uh, became uh, the legendary Grenade Games, so that was probably way more important for you at that time for us to... Uh, we were building the brand then. Yeah, I mean, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was important for sure. Yeah. And, you know, you didn't know if you were going to see them really. They were just inviting you to yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. dinner yeah. in Washington. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got to go act fake for a few hours like yeah. that and stay in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy is um, I recently, through my foundation, Find Your Grind, interviewed a guy that went into the army. And then um, Elon Musk ended up hiring this guy. Um uh, for H, this is crazy. For HR, he got out of the military. I forget how long he served for. Got out of the military, put in a job requirement for what was Tesla at the time. Well, still is Tesla, but he put in a job. Gets a call back. They hire this guy for HR. No real experience, but because of the military, they were looking for like that style of background. Yeah. Ended up getting this job at Tesla as way above than what he went in. Nice. He went in for and and they gets his HR job. And they ended up they ended up moving him to SpaceX, and then so he had, but literally went in there, had really no real education background, just had however long he'd served in the military and what his like achieved in the achievements were in the military in that time. But when they were scouring it, they were basically like, all right, like because of what you learned in the military, we feel like you're qualified to come in and do this and bring that actual military style to uh, to the company. Yeah, and this dude ended up being one of the guys that was when uh, Tesla was going to miss their quarterly quota. And this was uh, 2014 or 15 or 16, yeah. somewhere around there. And this is when uh, uh, Elon in the factory in Ve uh, sorry Reno did like a lock-in and kept these people in a factory for like 35 days. And he showed me the picture of the squadron, the, the, of the team that was to on the lineup. Done. And Elon Musk stayed in this factory with him for 35 what? days and was telling us all these like crazy stories about they stepped on carts Elon crying and like all these things and like how he missed his family, but work's more important than getting this thing like it has to be done. Um, super crazy story, but I wanted to go back to the actual military experience, like getting that training and getting that. Do you think that like set you up for like sh like the, the structure you have for today? And for sure, a hundred percent. Like work ethic, discipline, all that shit is a very huge part of my life, and I try to instill that shit in my kids now. Like yeah, before military and army and all that rambunctious as hell you know what i mean fuck the world kind of run around do right. whatever you know but after you see you know you can only come so close you know with life and death factors and they kind of change your perception on shit and i just think that something about that like not being full militant that shit's ridiculous kind of crazy but yeah. there's there's an aspect to it there's, that you can get shit done yeah like don't matter the task at hand like you give a couple people that have got a, a good mindset like that and some discipline with it shit's getting done so yeah Cause it's like there are countries like we grew up like uh, with um, kids from Finland and I, I don't know if Norway and Sweden has it, but the Finnish kids were, um, unless they got an exemption, were uh, mandatory military. Yeah, yeah. So you get those mandatory mi military skills, and these Finn kids are strong, buff, and have all gone from like either six months to a year of training or whatnot. Which you know these kids ended up kind of being militant athletes too. Yeah, I mean definitely helps for sure. I think yeah. you know and. It's cool to get that experience, and I think for them, I, like it's cool. We had a good friend from Norway, that, and he kind of would stay, and he'd go back every few months and do like train the new kind of national guard oh, cool, style cool. and keep it going. He'd be telling us stories about throwing grenades and all the fun stuff. Hell yeah! I wonder if you two are in Afghanistan at the same time. Yeah, so I was gonna say I actually got to go on a USO tour yeah. through X Games. So oh, because I had a bunch of X Games medals, they were like, hey. Um, do you want to come do this like two week tour? And I was like, kind of, I think it's really cool to go support yeah, the yeah. troops and like see what's really going on as opposed to just watching it on TV. And, um, it was a really, really, really eye opening experience. Like, I'm so glad I did it. It was definitely one of the scariest things I've done in my life. Cause we were kind of flying from forward operation yeah, yeah, bases yeah. to keep going. We went and made it all the way to Salerno, yeah. like rocket city or whatever. And. <laughs> 
But it, I remember all like, of them have really cool nicknames. They have like cool every nicknames. town is. And there's like t-shirts and mugs at these ones. You're yeah. like, whoa, it's like going to a beach in Florida. You're like RPG Alley. Let's go down here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but I really connected with a lot of these like kind of in their 30 year olds. You know, um, just like you know playing bones and hanging out where they're like, hey, like we'll take you out tomorrow if you want. We'll just go get into a little skirmish. I'm like, I'm all right. <laughs> but it was really scary flying from base to base yeah. in some of these situations because you feel really safe in the bases but obviously as you go to each one yeah that's kind of when like you know you really get the nerves or whatever feeling it is but the the camaraderie from like you get and then i kind of noticed and i mean you know this even better but i feel like there's almost like this extreme like uh not addiction but you kind of get 100 percent addiction. you get like really <laughs> like you get pumped up being in a war zone yeah and living in a war zone and like you say like coming home you don't have that same vibe and it's yeah. very different, but I could see within like those, like kind of that 25 to 30 year group, like they're definitely like pumped up on adrenaline oh, like, for sure. living in it. Yeah. I mean, not knowing what could happen any second or any minute afterwards, you know, kind of does some shit to your brain. The more you live it, the more you live it. So yeah, that's it, badass though. The U S or the USO. Yeah. Yeah. So it was through Hell USO yeah. or pro sports at the time, but it was really cool. Cause we got to go, all the different um, departments yeah. or, you know, groups where the CBs were like building all these barracks yeah, on this yeah. base. And then a few of them knew who, you know, I was through snowboarding. So they built me this launch ramp and I, I took a launch ramp on this airplane from like <laughs> from Salerno all the way back to like Kabul or whatever the main base was yeah. there. And people are like, all right, well, like put on a demo. I'm like, all right, I'll just skate around and launch <laughs> off this thing and do a kickflip or whatever. But it was super cool to like see it and meet these groups, you know? Yeah. We never got to do any of that. Like I was always, for some reason, our platoon was always off somewhere ridiculous. We'd, we'd hear about, they're like, Hey, Toby Keith or somebody came by today, but they would never come out to where we were at. We were just in the gnarliest place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of pro wrestlers like roll through yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, like <laughs> football stars. People are like, well, you're not like, you're not in the WWE, but you're pretty cool. You know? And, <laughs> You got a belt? No. Yeah. Just some just some Olympic medals, bro. Where's your belt? <laughs> yeah. And I remember I would do like these and I would give away all this grenade product we had. So it was like a lot of these dog tag keychains and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I also was like, you know what, I want to support these guys. So I brought like mad cigarettes and I had all these like and I was just do these signings would be cigarettes. People were like, you know we can get these like here. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Dude. Like, you did the greatest cigarette run of all time. I would say it was a great cigarette <laughs> run of all we, time. We watched the greatest beer the, run of all time. One for the history books. Mm -hmm. we, what was it? The greatest beer run mm -hmm. of all time. The greatest we watched, beer Have run. you watched that yet? I haven't seen that, now. So it's based on, it's loosely based on a true story um, about a kid from uh, New York that kind of went over and he would had some friends that, uh, it, it, it was Vietnam, so was it that, what, the 50s or 60s? 60s, 70s. 60s, all right, so this, it was in the late 60s and... This kid was from a town. People had gone, and and um, one of the kids had died from the town, and then there were a bunch of other kids. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to do my thing, and everyone said this kid was a loser, so he got a, 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 a duffel bag full of Pabst Blue Ribbon and then ended up in Vietnam and did this beer on through. No shit. It was pretty not. The story's pretty gnarly. I was like, it sounds bad. Zach Efron plays the character, and he does it really well. Uh, and then Russell Crowe's in it, so there's some it's, nice. It's, it's, yeah, some little heavy hitters in there. Yeah, no, but it's 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 a pretty it's a do good story. Yeah, but Danny was like, well, we gotta ask him if it's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I also got in some trouble because I made this printout of uh, baby cakes, and it was this. We made a snowboard video. This was a friend of ours that the Bone like Age. A model. Yeah, and she's a model, so I printed out like two thousand of these signature cards and said like. Hey, thanks for your service. I can't wait for you to get home so I can jump on your grenade. And like had <laughs> my secretary sign it at the time. Anyways, I left like 2,000 of these signature cards there. Oh, I love it. She was super pissed when I got home. She's like, you did what? And I'm like, I don't know. I thought it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> oh, she, you got in trouble with her, not Yeah, her, military. with her, no. <laughs> yeah. But I did have to go through uh, Freedom Gateway in Qatar. Nice. And they're like, they bring you into the room right before you go through and they're like, if you have any pornography, any of this, little amnesty that, box for you, you. Need to get it out now because you could go to jail in that country yeah. for like a month. Yeah, wow. And I'm like, all right, well, cleavage okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, absolutely not. Absolutely. <laughs> Ankles only. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so your engravings have like this crazy detail to them. Can you explain the technology and the process? Because I've touched all of them. I've seen a lot of them. I like still don't get it. Like it's a lot of deep, it's deep detail. It's a shit ton of detail. Yeah. So it really all depends on kind of what I'm doing, whether I'm doing wheels or we're doing trophies or we're doing trucks and vehicles and like that. But when I work with the client, it's really just one on one. I kind of get their story and kind of, you know, whatever we're doing specifically for that. I'll kind of just get on the iPad and kind of jot out like a little draft up a little, you know, whatever they're feeling and do a lot of photo reference. And from there, it's just game over. Really, like everything is so specific to, you know, each project and each customer that it's kind of different almost every time. So I, it's just a shit ton of drawing, a shit ton of engraving. <laughs> and, and then what happens just, if you mess up? Like, say you do a lot of customized stuff. You don't mess up. There's no messing up. Yeah. Like there is none. There's if I'm doing a huge piece and there's a lot of detail and, you know, clothes or anything, I can't mess up on anybody's face or any eye, obviously, you know, but I have tried to, you know, just alter the design just a little bit to kind of make it flow if there, but I've it's been years since I messed up. Really? Yeah. Years. Years. I guess as a tattoo artist, you can't well, knocking on wood. You know, you can't really mess <laughs> up either, right? For it's sure. Like, yeah, it's kind of the same deal. Like it's permanent. It's there. How'd you get the tattoos off your face? Laser. A lot of laser? A lot of fucking lasers. Brittany's trying to find out who your connection is. I know. Like, we know it's Dr. Tadoff. We already like, went. Yeah, Dr. 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 Tadoff took both of our fucking money. I and know. He dipped left. The <laughs> and didn't take your tattoos? No, they didn't take my tattoos. He, you, but you paid it? I did. I yeah, did the same thing. We did we the, did the, we did the prepay. We got, got. And then they closed the one in Phoenix. And I actually came down to LA before they closed the last one here. To get another session in because I already prepaid for the shit. I mean, would no that you put it yeah. on your face? Like, what did it look like when it was here? I mean, just bubbles. Oh, it was gross. I had <laughs> blisters all over. So it's like really just all the way down the sides of my face, mm -hmm. underneath here and up top here. I have some on my head, but I have my whole head blasted anyway. So I was like, I did that. And how much more does it cost to get a tattoo off than it does on? I think it was like four grand for my oh face. Oh my god! It was to like, get it off. and the tattoos on your face probably 40. cost fucking nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing. they were free. <laughs> they were free. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that we live in a time now where tattoo removal uh, remo removalist. I can't talk today. Removalist is a removalist. stupid word anyway. Yeah. I hate it's that. I don't like that word. word. That should be a band. <laughs> is that a word? Oh, it know. is now. For a guy that talks for a living, I'm not very good at talking. <laughs> You're doing great, sweetie. I can't spell either. Um, the eyelids. Did the eyelids hurt? The eyelids sucked. That was deep in Mexico, so I don't really, so I don't really even know. And they said they could la – uh, I asked them because it was part of the process when we went to go get the laser, and they were like, we can't do the laser, but we can take your armpit skin – and surgically go, and I'm like, fuck that shit. Shave bro. it off, and then put I was like, what am I putting? Armpit what am I putting? Skin. Then you'd have hairy. I'm putting hairy eyelids. I know I'm a hairy like... eyelids. Nah, I'm cool with the tatties, man. We're good with it. <laughs> no, they look cool. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't really know what you're doing. As right. You know, are they open? Are they closed? <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's got good looking eyes too. Right. You know. Got to do what you got to do, man. Um, what's the? Because I know that you're super detailed in in going in there. How do you like? From project to project, how do you personalize uh, each kind of, you know, because I remember, with, I, I can't remember it, but I remember on Kells' one, Machine Gun Kelly's, how yeah. you had kind of like told a story. You kind of like, you kind of like tell a story. In yeah, yeah. Ravings. So I kind of, I think that was uh, when Hotel Diablo dropped. So I was kind of just taking, you know, what he was doing and like he was moving and shaping in different directions. So yep. I was kind of just taking, you know, looking at videos of his shows and concerts, like going to concerts and kind of seeing the whole vibe. And then I really like to, feel it and get with it and then kind of just let that shit flow through my Dremel. So, I mean, it's really just putting about putting something together that's really going to almost tell a story or invoke emotion. That's like the yep. the huge thing for me is like the emotion portion of it. We can always make cool stuff for cool people, but when you like do something for a good cause or it raises good funds to do something else that actually makes a difference, that's where we're really trying to focus on right. the future. So. And then what's like, um, you know, I wouldn't want to want to say best, but what 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 what's the, like a project to you that stands out the most that had just as much emotion and meaning as it did like fulfilling the project? I was like any sort of the memorials that I do. I do a lot of memorials for like veterans that don't don't come back, and you know different things for families. But I probably had to say Freedom Blues, like the that truck kind of just was the spotlight. It was the most work I've ever put in on anything at the time, and then from what became of that was so much more than I could ever ask for too. So, yeah. And then what about like kind of car wise or like bike wise? Cause it's like a lot of biking cars. Is there like a favorite like bike or car? Um, 
We did the Kiss bike for Gene Simmons. That was fucking Does he cool. ride? I don't fucking think so. But that thing, that bike had like pyro and lasers and shit. So I think it was just to go up on stage and then they put on a show with it. But um, we have a, I have a story. I, I got to interview him on yeah. uh, Sirius XM. This motherfucker answered a phone call during the interview. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's all live. He's all, excuse me, excuse he me. He does not, he does not <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care shit. about anything. He's no. a big dude, too. Yeah. Just talking about how much he cheats on his wife and blah, 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 and then just answers the phone. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Scum. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, what were you saying? Sorry, no, but it's to... just all about doing completely different things. Last year we did the Country Legends build, so I got to bring that out to PBR, but I did almost 25 different portraits of old school country artists like Hank Jun- or Hank Sr., Loretta Lynn, which is actually dope Like because I'm doing the work with uh, Loretta Lynn's race and everything. So, But that one was crazy. We had that out in front of uh, T-Mobile Arena for PBR Finals last year, and literally if you were – go into PBR finals, you had to walk past the truck and we were right there in front. I was just engraving right after SEMA. Like it was insane. That's so sick. Yeah. They're, I got to see the Loretta one. I haven't seen it. So I do the first place trophies for the past three years. Yeah. So everybody in each class, if you get a first place trophy, it's from me. And then they base the second and whatever on through off the trophies that I've done. But that 40, that 40th one, you definitely have to see. Yeah. It's massive. It also got taken in the flood, which happened. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. Like, it flooded, was that last year or two years ago? Uh, last year. And have, you, then, have you seen so, the footage of this? Like, Loretta's no. fully, yeah, like, flooded gnarly. away. Yeah. Shit. No. Were you there? No, we weren't there, which, which was nuts because it was, like, nine days after Loretta. So if that would have happened during the race, there would have been... Chaos. H- hundreds, of, hundreds of thousands of, like... Yeah. It was so bad. But we ended up doing, like, the ranch foreman, Wayne, who worked at the Loretta's for 40-some-odd years... He was taken in that flood, and we got to when we when we went back to Loretta's, we did a like a memorial trophy for him as well, and they had all Loretta's family up and on wow. the stage and stuff. So it was really cool, man. It's 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 and the race they were able to redo the race. They had to move to move some things around. I, I remember literally seeing a video of like a house floating away. Yeah, no, it was like crazy. So the trophy was actually in a U-Haul truck because it's a almost almost seven feet tall. This How trophy. much is it weigh? 400 pounds like it rotate like i have it on this it's insane like it's massive it's on a like an industrial rotator so it spins around so it kind of tells the story as you go yep i got a massive monster claw in the middle with smoke and shit that comes out like it's it's awesome but they loaded it up and it was on the u-haul just sitting on the property somewhere and they think they found it like two and a half miles away dumped on its side and completely covered in mud and everything, but I got it back and brought it to pretty much re engraved half of it. And really, the yeah. engraving's got all the little. Yeah, yeah. So like just sitting underwater for yeah, so long, rusted. and it was just it's just all raw aluminum. So it's it's black powder coated aluminum, and then I engrave through, and we keep it raw so everybody can touch it and feel it, and just the the dirt and the mud and the gnarliness that it went through. But we got it back to its original glory. That's cool. We kept some of the dirt on the inside of it. To kind of just keep it forever, yeah. you know yeah, what I tell mean? That like story. tell that story. We need to get Hank out to uh, engrave. The I was peace just sign. thinking the same thing. I built this huge peace sign for Grenade Games. Yeah, nine or ten, in ten. And uh, the guys that were were building it down in uh, Bishop, they built a lot of stuff for Burning Man. So they're like, "Do you want to add some flames?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Not really," but they're like, "We do." And I'm like, "They're All like, right, are you fine. sure?" So it's like a giant peace sign from like the book um, Johnny Got His Gun. Hell yeah! But it's all metal and like eight feet tall, and it shoots flames out of the oh, that's the peace signs. Yeah, but it's out in the on the property out in Mono. Oh, that's badass! And it's just waiting for you. So. Yeah, we need to get Hank and Christina out there on a trip. You guys can bring the kids and camp. You go to Yosemite and then you can come do some engraving. Exactly. That'll look sick engraved. That's like the first time I've traveled this weekend, and I don't have to work at all. It's kind of crazy. Is that nice? I, well, I always go like anywhere I go. I'm working. I'm engraving. We're doing yeah. some sort of demo. We're doing some sort of hotspot or something. So it's it's been kind of nice. It's nice. What's it? What's like sixteen year old Hank think about? You know where, where you're at now. Hank. Could you could you could you have imagined like the life that you've kind of built Not for yourself? Close. Not even close. Yeah, we're just getting started too. Yeah. So what's your favorite thing to attend? Because I know now that you attend kind of a lot of these. You know PBR, NASCAR. Um, I was like PBR got me. Like yeah. I went uh, two years ago. I got to do like the 
New York Stock Exchange, ring the bell with the PBR teams and all that. And then we uh, did an engraving that we gave to a veteran at Madison Square Garden. So like it was a, that was my first little dip into PBR. And I'm a fucking fan. It's, it's crazy, crazy world, right? These motherfucking tiny ass dudes yeah. with big old Popeye arms jumping on these <laughs> thousand pound bull. They're insane, man. Yeah, like, the energy's insane too. Like for the one coming up here at Crypto.com here in LA, it's two nights just Staples Center, Crypto, Cowboy Hats. Yeah. 30,000 of them, two nights in a row. <laughs> Insane. I'm like, where do these people come from? I know. It's nuts to see in New York, too, because yeah. like, just walking around with all the writers and stuff, and everybody's like, where do these people come from? Did you go to the one this year in Madison Square Garden? Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. just there with Kurt? Yeah. So I've been on the road. Dude, I've seen Kurt like three, four times this year Man, so far. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Kurt Bush, <laughs> Kurt Bush came and did New Year's Eve with me, and it came to my family's home in Australia. No, like, oh, literally, I saw the video. Like, like literally, like, sent a text, like, hey, I'm going to come to Australia with you. And I'm like... Sure, dude. Like, sure. sure. Kurt Bush is going to come to Australia. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Let it go for a couple of weeks, and he, like, sends me his itinerary. And I'm like, guess he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, it, was, it was really cool. It was also really emotional, you know? Like, we were we, – I was with him when we, we got the phone call about Ken, which is all yeah. super weird, you know, of how, how that all went down. But, like, that was, you know, really sad, but su super crazy. And I was with Kurt, and he, he pulled up that picture. And it was a picture of Rodney Sachs. Had kind of made Kurt take or kind of pull, pull this group together, but it's a picture of um, Rodney, Ken, Kurt, Lewis, Hamilton, and Valentino Rossi. I saw that picture, yeah. And that's like the gnarliest picture of the gnarliest motorsport athletes in the world, right. all in that one spot, you know? And then with Rodney, and, and Rodney actually got on the phone with us that day and was like, yeah, that's, I can't believe, you know, that, that that's, and Rodney was on the force of that picture, but. Just such a family, you know, and it's cool that, you know, that's kind of what Monster is. It's, it's, we're being here a long time. Most definitely. And, and you've been a part of UFC for, since the beginning, which mm -hmm. is, you know, one of our longest running deals. And it's, it's a really family orientated company and the, the way that it treats people and the way that it brings people together from, from all over the world. And I was, couldn't be happier to have Kurt home with us and, and be able to, but then literally then fly straight there and, and, yeah. and be on the, be on the circuit and travel around. We get to do so many cool things. So it's, it's cool that the people that we're able to meet, and maintain those uh, those relationships, uh, which is which is awesome. But that that PBR because Madison Square Garden is now the official energy drink sponsor. Monster Energy is now the official energy drink sponsor of Madison Square Garden, Let's which is go. fucking crazy. It's, Let's it's, go. It's, it's really cool, and I think they're trying to work on like some kind of cool marketing video there. But yeah. wouldn't that be sick to have like Kurt? Like I, I I know they can't really put the NASCAR on the street, but we've done it before. But have like some kind of video of all the athletes coming together at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And some kind of promo video, but really MSG, badass. man, like that shit's crazy. Yeah, iconic, like, forever I, iconic. Iconic, yeah. right? It'd be we, really cool to like put a little taxi light on top of the NASCAR and yeah. have them like picking people <laughs> up. <laughs> like, come on in. Where do you want to go? Just JFK, toss them, no problem. Because that's everywhere. what I was saying. I was saying, how sick would it be to have like the, utilize like the police officer on the ho like police officer on the horse? Like, what are you guys doing? There's like like Kurt picking people up. You got like Axel wheeling down the street. Yeah. <laughs> You need um, to make that happen. I know. <laughs> I, we're working on it. We'll talk about it to dinner tonight. We've got a, a, a pretty special dinner coming up. Tonight. Is there uh, is there anybody that you'd like have not that you would love to engrave something for or in your head or, or a project that you would like love to do? Um, I, F1's been on my book to do something with F1 racing for sure. Like kind of do something there. Um, I started. I wanted to get into the, like kind of drag wheel, but then I ended up doing some drag wheels for one of the class one guys. Yep. like so badass, man. Like, I spent so long engraving these wheels, and then just to see them get out there and just rip them up on the track, it's fucking beautiful. Sick, right? Yeah. Have you gotten in many cars? No, I did. Um, no, I did like I did a couple laps in the NASCAR type stuff a couple years ago, but nothing really super crazy yeah uh, i've never done any of the baja stuff yeah so i do um i've gone down with nick with warrior built foundation i know yep. monster sponsors them it's a bunch of combat veterans that kind of do recreational uh therapy when they get out so they bring a bunch of combat veterans down to the 500 or the thousand and we'll have you know homeboys with the amputees no arm no leg literally ripping on the dirt bike you know kind of as a whole team they do the sportsmen's uh so we're just down there to have a good time but it's good to get everybody and like even the chase team and everybody is all combat veterans and stuff. So it's just a real bring it together brotherhood type thing. Get that camaraderie that we had, you know, overseas, but in a good environment. 
Speaking of those projects, the background, you know, in military with the army, uh, the veteran with the tours in Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan, and then being actively involved in the veteran organizations, including the PTSD art therapy cause with Wounded Warrior Project. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. So I did, um, we haven't done one in probably like a year and a half, but working with the Wounded Warrior Project, I kind of get a group of eight to 10 combat veterans together and I get them for a few weekends, a couple a couple Friday or Saturdays kind of throughout the month. And then we'll focus, I'll, I'll teach them kind of a basic to engraving, kind of what really kind of helped me when I started. I was dealing with fucking PTSD like crazy and just some other fucked up shit, you know what I mean? And really just be able to sit down, turn everything off and focus on this piece for, you know, two hours, four hours, whatever it really was. It really does something to kind of shut that off and use a creative way, especially for people who aren't creative, you know, it's like a new something that's just unleashed, you know what I mean? Like, and it's just, it's, it's been so in going so well that we're just going to continue to do them. I got another one coming up uh, this summer that we're going to do, I think with about uh, 10 to 12 veterans as well. And I'm pumped on that, man. Like, so cool. And then like, how much can the art and what you're doing help in help for these traumatic experiences? I think it helps a lot. There's been there's been a few people that have taken my class that have kind of done doing what I'm doing, you know what I mean, on a smaller scale where they're just doing Yetis or something else. So it's helping them financially kind of supplement some income. And then it's just helping them with dealing with their own shit, kind of learning how to focus and turn some shit off and just literally just focus on you and what you can do. And I mean, it's just been an awesome experience. It's like it forces them to be present, right? Because For sure, yeah. PTSD is literally them thinking back on the trauma. Somewhere so else, it literally you know? trains their brain to be in the moment, which yeah. is all what we really have. It's art therapy is one of the most important things. That's incredible yeah. to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it's been it's been it's been good. I know it, she's an artist. I heard. I yeah. heard I heard some stories. I don't yeah. know, but yeah. I'm an artist. I'm a painter. Let's get down. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we need a little collaboration. Let's do let's it. Go. I would love to. That'd be bitching. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. She does really good Star Wars stuff. I work with Star Wars, yeah. I don't think I, I have done some Star Wars stuff. I think it's like, it does like some air compressor tanks or something like that for yeah. some lower trucks. They're a little something. particular now. They're like either our stuff or no stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Disney? Yeah. yeah. I can't even, the paintings that I've done for them that were turned into cards. I can't do anything with them. I can never sell them. I can never. No, they give, own that shit. No, but I own it, which yeah. is so I just get to have Nuh-uh, them. Those little <laughs> Mickey Mouses own it. <laughs> yeah, Disney. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but they don't own. But they they own the rights, but the physical painting, they don't. I do, but I can't do anything with it. But you're not allowed to sell the physical. painting. I'm not allowed painting. to sell the physical painting. So they own it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. Oh. I'm teasing. She's gonna. Pop. I was like, pop. Maybe you could trade. You can trade it, but you can't sell it. Maybe I'll sell it to George Lucas. Give it to me. There you and go. And then I'll yeah. sell it. Yeah, then it's your fault. Well, I, I, I was kind of gonna go get there. Stole my I was like, art you gift it. Sold it. <laughs> okay, I see what you're doing. But most famously, she's really great at portraits too. Um, uh, Lady Gaga, um, Steven Tyler, but the most famous one was. Conor McGregor that he ended up putting in his gym. So Let's if you go. follow Conor, or, but that one has yeah. been seen daily by yeah, lots of people. Yeah, I actually have a John Jones one that I had done for UFC, which we're re- de- debuting at the next weekend's fight. John's fighting next? That fight comes up. Yeah. Next Are you weekend. excited? Uh, I'm actually, I'm in a wedding, but I'm going to actually go to the fight this time. Oh, Which good. is where I'm not working it. I'm going to go, which is going to be strange. Oh, because it's not in Vegas? No, it's in Vegas, but I have a wedding, so I was just trying to like... Oh, you're not working. I'm not you working, to, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I yeah, get yeah, home late go. enough to where I can go see the fight. I just am not working the fight. Yeah, yeah. that'd be nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You going? Do you... No. No, oh. no I'm chilling. Um, no, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I haven't been to Vegas yet this year. That's I don't weird. think so. Huh. The years are kind sure? of flying I feel by. Like you just went like a few weeks ago. I know. I, I went in December. Like you, you were was there it? for Super Bowl. The no, Super Bowl was in Arizona. That was Phoenix. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's next year. It's no, a different I meant, fucking like, desert. I you want, yeah. yeah, but you actually physically at Super Bowl. Super Bowl will be crazy in Vegas. Yeah. 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 Is it really the next year? Yeah. 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 Wow. Raiders Stadium. Yeah. I wonder who's gonna play for the Raiders this year. Do you follow football? I follow the Cardinals. Yeah. And it's just sad. It stories is sad. For the, my entire life. So. <laughs> It is what but it is. Aren't we getting a good player? There's rumors that aren't we're... we getting a good player? <laughs> it's almost. <laughs> oh gosh. I don't know. The rumor is is that you're gonna get like a like an A list, but I think yeah. apparently he might be old. And it could be like his uh, his residency deal. Yeah. It's either gonna right. be you think Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. I was gonna That's say Gronk, and he'll be DJing as well. Gronk, yeah. I mean, <laughs> man, Gronk, hardest worker, man. How fun was that party though? 
No, it was so such Strong a blast. Beach. Yeah, such a blast. He's that that party slowly becoming like the hit party of oh, Super it's Bowl because be. yeah. all those things you go to, it's like a million people all trying to go to the same yep. thing, and it's like this whole. It's like New Year's Eve. It's just yeah. an overdue, overkill. Whereas that one, it's like they've got a great team that runs it. The Gronk Beach people are awesome. The Win people that put it together, and it's like a structured, done, cool thing that's like not too overwhelming. Yeah, no, it was perfect. The people they had there, I mean, 21, Little John, fucking Tech was there. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, we didn't really like the 21 Savage performance. No. It's kind of boring. He's I a did, sick rapper. I, I didn't I get it, I just don't man. think he's like. He's, not, the, he's he, not performer of the year, but you hang out with Kells, too. Like, yeah, I'm used to an entertainer. That, mother, that motherfucker's putting on show shows, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 he's climbing rock. Yeah, he literally just stood up there and was like. Brr, 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 brr. And everybody <laughs> was just sitting there bobbing their head. I was like, this is the headliner, bro. Yeah. Okay, well. What kind of music did you grow up listening to? Fucking everything. Everything, so fucking rock, rap, metal, yeah, don't fucking. Matter. I'm kind of the same. Like, I, like, I don't have a genre. I like know? everything. I really do. And I was like, whenever I'm doing certain things, so like when I'm doing a Kiss bike or something, I'm listening to Kiss while I'm doing yeah. it. I did that Country Legends truck. That was two thousand hours of nothing but country music <laughs> and shit that I'm listening to. So I'm getting used to country music. <clears throat> I, I can't do the new shit. I can't. Yeah, that's what people my wife, say. My wife throws that shit Does on. Does she? And, oh yeah. Sick. And I'm all, god damn it, man. <laughs> They're so catchy though. But like pop country, but pop country and country country are different. Yeah. For like, sure. The people at PBR are not listening to pop country. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're uh, I don't know. I don't think I so, think man. Now are. there's like, like this new behind, alternative behind country that's doors? coming out. <laughs> yeah, Luke well they're Bryant. Like, Luke Bryant. Luke Bryant. Yeah, but there's like it's like an alternative country. Oh, now. He's pop like country. Like kind of, Tyler Childress and all yeah, those dudes. Yeah, yeah. He's pop like country. That. Yeah. Is that still pop? I think so. Alternative I'm pretty good friends with Dustin Lynch, who came from that kind of Luke Bryant umbrella and they're like pop country. Mm. Like they're like, yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah. You know, these guys aren't really wearing cowboy hats though. Like Luke Bryant's not he yeah. doesn't wear cowboy hats. Yeah. You know, it's like this guy's got a baseball hat on and whatever else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Action sports. Have you like do you snowboard, skateboard? Not a fucking thing. Yeah. Not a thing. Broken bones in your life? No. Nope. Nothing? Nothing. Never broke a bone. Fingers. Yeah, a couple fingers, a thumb. That's and you it. need those. Yeah. Well, this is my this is my money hand now. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> Can you have you ever engraved like switch? Can you do it the other way? I tried. Doesn't work. Yeah. Can't do it. I'm not ambidextrous. So. No. no. Tried to tried to train myself for a little while. And really? Just, yeah. Because what's the benefit of that? Just because your well, hands just wouldn't literally, get sore? Like, yeah, they're just. Because you could do like four dead. hours on yeah. this one and if then I another can, four if hours I could on do this the, one. If I could do this, I would save <laughs> half the time. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> what's uh, some new projects you're working on that you're super excited about? Uh, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna engrave a Model X this year. So I'm gonna go crazy on some fucking Tesla engraving this year. Really? Yeah, oh. that's gonna fucking I'm telling you that's gonna be insane. You're gonna go spacey on it? What are you I gonna do? I think so. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I literally am probably just gonna try to get fucking Elon's attention and be like, hey, we need the first engraved Model X up in the fucking yeah. Scene. You're like, here's oh, the deal. I'm, I'm doing all, this one. Send and that I'm shit doing out there. The next dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm gonna send that shit to space. Let's go. I mean, yeah. that'll that like, what, what, yeah. What, what, what are you gonna do to get his attention? You gotta get his attention. I feel like he's like he's like kind of a. You would have to he, tweet. He's in tune. <laughs> he's in tune though. It's like tweet he knows. What, I feel like he knows what's going on oh, a lot sure. more than people he's think. He's listening yeah. right yeah. now. I know somebody <laughs> he's paying is listening right now. <laughs> so what are you gonna put on the car? Saw one of them. I'm probably just gonna do like a not from this world kind of theme on it you know what i mean real spacey kind of make it to where we could probably get his attention or something but, yeah. yeah you gotta throw miles in there something like that you know <laughs> just make it badass i mean just i can just i could see it in my head to where it's just kind of like an outer space theme but throw some you know twitter references dogecoin a bunch of little baby references kind of in the background and make it Make it like something you'd have to actually look for and follow through. Right. Didn't, didn't he have, didn't Elon have the NFT shoes? He did that like sneaker shoes where oh, yeah, yeah. you should like maybe like put some kind of little NFT like That'd be crazy. thing on it to where if you scan it on your phone, it's actually turns into something else. Like yeah. a barcode almost. Yeah. Engrave it. Happening. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> It's you, weird. You're going to see that on there. You're going to be like, that was my fucking idea, my bro. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Twitter thing's weird. Turn things weird. I don't really get down with Twitter, man. Like, I mean, apparently everyone that comes in here doesn't <laughs> like Twitter. I don't like too. it either, though. It's not now world. I feel like Twitter is like if you want to get news out yeah. or whatever reason, right? So that makes sense that our world, we're artists and displaying images for yeah, us is, is a artists. way for us to talk. Yeah, yeah. action sports, visual. <laughs> Twitter is a lot of more like literary like yeah. words. Like I said, I don't, I don't come up with like interesting little snippets of words. 
know what I mean? Like that wasn't even. I'm the same thing. fucking. You don't want to yeah. hear my inspiration <laughs> yeah. quote of the day. None. <laughs> I'm all get the fuck up. Let's go. <laughs> and that's every, every day. day. Every, every day. day. <laughs> every day. Every day. That's funny. I used to have one on there and I had to go back and take it out. It was like. Fuck it, it's Friday or something. I can't remember. <laughs> yours what would be good, Dingo. I would actually want to hear yours. Yeah, but I never really got down with Twitter. Did you? You weren't really much of a tweeter. No, I mean when it first started. But I feel like you'd be pretty good because the way you text, like lots of exclamation points, like you really, yeah, your words really come across in your. That's text. how I identify my phone. If you have lots of exclamation points, it means it's important. Mm-hmm. So it's like Aaron. Well. That's there were six. That's an important, it's not that important. important it's almost Aaron. important. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have lots of phones too. I think under Little John's name, we could go on there and there's probably like seven phone numbers. Little John one, Little John two, Little John yeah. two thousand five. New number. Little John new number. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer. <laughs> lots of bat. Lots of bat phones. You ever engraved a phone? Nope, done some covers and shit like that, but not an actual phone. No, I mean, could you engrave that? Hundred percent. You could. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Should have to happen. You don't carry a case on that shit? Nah, I broke it the Just other out day. here raw dog in life, huh? Little, Just... huh? <laughs> Basically, man, that's my motto. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living that way the whole life. Right? Um, any exciting trips coming up? Man, what do we got coming up, dude? I got a, all sorts of shit. Yeah, that's, that's a question for the wife. I really don't know shit Christine's about- Christine's in charge. Yep. Like anything to do with schedules, contracts, all that shit. She handles everything and kind of gives me the heads up. She's like, hey, you got to be in Vegas next week or hey, you got to do the, You got this ready. And that's the only way I actually get to kind of enjoy, you know, what I do. If I had to deal with the whole other side of it, I probably couldn't do it. So do you engrave just for fun, like personal stuff? I, I used to, but Not now it, now it's just impossible. Yeah. So do you notice that? And, and I can relate to this like when it's a lot of commissions and projects it's so fun and i never say like i have to do it i get to do it yeah yeah for sure but it there is something uh interesting about how you feel about the work like when i can paint like right now i'm painting a show and it's so it's exciting because it's like what i want to do yeah and when someone buys what i'm painting out of my mind it's just a different kind of a sell but then when i'm doing these projects like star wars they told me you paint, you know, this is who you're painting. And although it's so fun, but does it take any of the passion out of it for you? Or how do you feel? I mean, I mean some of it. It yeah. obviously depends on the thing. But like at the end of the day, then you'd it's be pressure like, you'd be too. Like, you can't mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people are watching you. And then how how what's in here and what's in their head are two completely different for things. For sure. You know what I mean? They're like, this is what I want. You're like, well, this is what I can do. It's not the way it really works. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really happen like that. So it's interesting. It's like you're trying to read their mind and then still... Be authentic to your yeah, yeah yeah i pretty much got to the point to where everybody is just they know what they're pretty getting. much do your fucking thing man yeah. so it's it's i'm super blessed that way unless it's you know i turn down projects that yeah. they're like the water must be running north to mm-hmm. east. i'm like nah bro yeah. I'm, not, I'm not the one yeah <laughs> have you had people be up upset oh yeah with projects uh not after they received them no okay like it's it's normally me like turning them down or Something to that effect, just being like, I don't yeah. really want to do it type shit. Yeah, somebody you know? that's too like, oh, like I need this lake to look like this. Yeah, mm-hmm. do some. Do, crazy do you have that? Shit. Do you have those problems? I have. Yeah, I have. I have a commission right now, and the the gentleman's this really great guy, but he was uh, in the Air Force, and he he had like two different jobs. He's like, I want you to do my portrait, but I'm gonna be half Air Force and then half this, and I was just like. Okay, so like I don't know how to split. I've done, a person. I've done that with a fireman yes, and an army thing. Yes. I've done that before. It's so. like I'm like I'm like I can do that, but is that what you for sure want? Like you're for sure for sure. Like don't you want something that maybe later in life you could resell? Like, but it, it's it's you just don't. They want something, and I, it's so important to them. You want it to be special, and I also know what I'm capable of and not. And yeah. So yeah, I think sometimes you get or I painted like a wife before, and the photo of her was just. Like, it was the worst lighting. It yeah. wasn't a great photo. She was, like, on the beach. It was all shadow. I was like, are you sure that this is the photo you want? He's like, no, it's the one I want of her. It's my favorite photo of my wife. And I did. And I think it turned out great. But You, um, like, enhanced her a little bit. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you really can't, though, because then it takes away yeah, from yeah. the person. The I've tried, shadow, I've you tried can't, to like, do that. Like, you could just brighten her up. I'm like, you can't, though, because if the sun and her hat <laughs> and the shadow has to be here, it's not going to make sense. <laughs> like, in art school, they teach you. So, I don't know. It's different. To you, uh, portraits are pretty difficult. Portraits suck. Yeah. So, I mean, it really depends on the person. I love anything with, like, some beard on it. Like, oh, yeah. 
if it's a smooth face or like I like. Yep. But it's o- a game of millimeters. Pe- if you mess up the nose, yeah. if the smallest thing doesn't look like him at all. Yeah, the eyes and the nose are yep. definitely like. That's it. If you fuck up, you're done. Yeah, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, did he you're always have a fucked up eye like that? Yeah, <laughs> a little lazy. <laughs> throw an eye patch <laughs> add, add, add some extra like hair on her face just yeah, to cover exactly. that part. Yeah. <laughs> It's always weird too, like when you see like a sculpture of someone like that, and they're just completely off. Yeah. Like there's a bunch at the Staples Center, and I forget which one it is, but it's like it, it could be Kareem, but it's like it's not. It's off. Yeah, you're like that's not him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, this shit's forever too. Yeah. Right. Um. Uh. Sorry, I we just we wait we talked a lot, and I just didn't even realize that. Um. So, Danny, do you have any last questions? Uh. No. Not really. I mean. I think we covered it all pretty well. Brittany? Nope, I'm good. Hank, well, we appreciate you here at Monster Energy, but everything you've done. We need to get you to do an X Games trophy. That's what we need to work on. 100%. So we need to link that in, but that'd be really cool. Those shits are too bland. They're just Xs, you know? They're so bland, dude. We need to get you to come in and- Church it up a little. Rock that shit. That's the one thing. I know you did something for Nija, but that was more of a personal thing, right? Yeah. Um, we never did, so we need to, we need to work on that. But man, we appreciate everything you've done. We appreciate you, and uh, Monster Energy loves you, dude. So I thank you love very it, much, man. Most definitely, I appreciate it, guys. Thank it's you. Wrap. Yep. Let's get Woo! it. Keep up that great work. <laughs>